Somebody said in the comment section a statement that was really interesting. They said Game makes some of the best diss records ever. And when you sit here and look at his battle resume, his battle resume is impressive. And people go on and on and talk about back-to-back -back with Drake. Pest Control was way better than back-to-back. -back. Yes. He murdered Meek Mill on that. And I'm going to be honest, man. Like, I want to jump out the window, but Pest Control is one of the most vicious diss records I've ever heard. It's very no Vaseline. Line. He was going in. And people it's act like Vaseline. it never happened. People act like no Pest Control never happened. I mean... We've talked about how he gets like understated and overshadowed, and we yeah. brought up the reasons why, but we only brought up one valid reason. Like, there are other MCs that are considered to be greater than him, and they're more valid, like, there are more red flags against them than there are against him. Exactly. And we talk yeah. about the battle, and I, I know, like, when you know, obviously, when you're ranking top MCs, competitiveness is part of it, right? So, the battle, if that person is qualifiable for that, that should give a person extra marks. we looking at 300 bars and running. You look at pest control. You're looking at, I mean, the man's resume speaks for itself when it comes to diss records. The Mike, subliminals here and there. Mike, well, here's the thing about him. When it comes to battle, he has a lot of things in his favor that work well for him in battle. One, he's highly competitive. You need that to be in battle. Mm -hmm. One, he is lyrical, Mike. He's not like Nas or Black Thought, but he's still lyrical, Mike. He's imposing, and I mean imposing not in the physical sense, vocally on the track, imposing. Mm -hmm. And so, like, getting his point across. Two, Mike, when it comes to getting his point across, he doesn't care how the point gets articulated, gets articulated, which in a lot of realms doesn't work well. In battle, it's perfect because there aren't any rules really about what you can say now, is there? No, you're right. And he's disrespectful right. as fuck. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> It's very disrespectful. I mean, I'm just saying, and it's like, again, it boggles my mind, and we didn't even think about it, or I didn't even think about it during the show uh, a couple of days ago. But how do we not talk about pest control? People act like pest control never happened. Well, you want to know what, Mike? I don't talk about pest control enough, so I hold myself accountable. I do. One of those people. Me too, because I didn't even mention it when we were talking about it the other day. I didn't. I mean, I, I, you know, I told you when it comes to like verses and stuff like that, I try to leave the diss stuff out of there. Like even right, with the right, right. versus busy playlist that we're coming up with. Like even if they plan on playing the takeover, we don't plan on playing Ether, do we? Because I don't like Ether's. Not I was thinking about stuff. Ether. I really was thinking about Ether. And, and for everybody in the chat, we're gonna do if the. Wanna, uh, if you want to play the the Tupac intro, and, <laughs> and then get into something else, like I'm cool with that. But like. Well, you know what? For everybody in the chat, we're actually going to do the mock verses with Rap Roundtable this coming Monday at 8 o'clock. So it should be fun. Get your popcorn ready. Um, might need to move that to 9. 9? Might, might be. Okay. Well, we'll work it out. But um, anyway, it's one of those things where it's like, again, with all of these things on the game's resume, and something else you said really stuck out in my mind, too. He is a momentum rapper. And so, yeah, like, when you look at, like, diss records, it's perfect for that. When the third verse is that strong, people are waiting for more and more and more. And look at the 300 bars and running, man. It's like. So, Mike, can I tell you something? And here's what I mean about momentum. <clears throat> On Ether, when Nas is like, is he Dame Diddy, Dame Daddy, or Dame Dummy? Oh, I get it. You biggie. That's the moment, Mike. That moment's happening towards the latter half of the third verse where it's like, oh, this is over. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, a stand, a pussy. But yeah. That's you where 36 it happened. In the karate you know I mean? like, like For me, it happened yeah. on the hook. But for most people, that's where it happened. And where it usually happens is on the third verse. Mike, on the takeover, the takeover is actually about Prodigy. But Mike, where does it really happen, though? On the third verse? Nah. What is the most memorable verse on Ether? would you say? The third verse? I mean, Mike, the most memorable part of Ether to me is still the hook. But if we're talking verses, Verse. yeah, it's the, Mike, it's that part. Oh, I get it. You Biggie and he's Puffy. Ew. What do y'all uh, think is the best? I'm asking the people in the chat. What do y'all think is the best rap line in Ether? Yeah, that's that. That's what I think it is because it was something that you could like point to and look at his career and be like, oh, well, yeah, that's going on. 
If someone said back to back, it was hilarious. Like back to back was one of those things where we didn't expect it, and and the lines were clever. I'll, I'll give Drake that. He could hit you with a couple of lines where you're like, ah, oh. like My you know, thing. even when he did the little the little shot at Chris Brown, he was like, you know me as a Chris Bottle sender, uh, right. check picker up, or that shit's hard. My. Drake in that battle, Mike. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Like, that's one of his best moments as an MC. And so that says something about him as an MC that when the moment called upon it, he had one of his finest moments as an MC. That says a lot about an MC because mm-hmm. it's not just about what you do, Mike. I told you, like, a lot of these guys, why I think that they're great. Mike, a lot of my top guys, look at the time when they were great. They're great right around the other guys with Scarface, Nas, Big, Pop. Jay, Rakim, K. they're not just great unto themselves. They're great around other great guys, and they still stand out. And so they, they seize the moment. You know what I mean? They're not scared of the moment. And in that moment, yeah. he seized the moment and had one of his best moments, you know? And you know, I gotta, yeah, yeah. we got to give him props for that. And he tried to do that, you know, when it came to Duffy Freestyle, but he ran into something that was, you know, a little bit more than him. And another person who seizes the moment a little bit more. Uh, I will say this about Wayne. And as, as impressive as Wayne's career has been, Wayne's never been proven in that kind of setting in a way that somebody like a T.I. has or a Pusha T. Now, one thing I will say about T.I., I can say that the quality of MC, respectfully, based on how quality of an MC he is, has never really been up to the level of him. If that makes any sense, because him and Luda didn't really have no, a no, head up him. like in the way that him and Flip did, or the way no, that him and Shawty Low rest in peace did. You know what I mean? No, I get it from that perspective, but I'm, I think I may be missing the point that you're trying to make. My point is the fact that you know the battle means a lot in hip hop, okay. okay. Um, and Wayne has never done that. Ti has done that, but Ti has done that. If someone would really start picking into that, he hadn't done that with somebody that's on his level, head up. So what you're trying to say for all of this is that, okay, so they're comparable MCs. Do you think that T.I. is a better MC and what you just stated is one of the reasons why? Is that what you're saying? I think so. Uh, I think that that's why I would put him, you know, ahead because he does have more of the overall scope when it comes to... You know, just that MC work and the battle was part of it. When you look at all of the elites, they have been in this situation. Being I mean, battle Mike, tested. Well, no, yes, Johnson Mike, Daily Sports says battle tested. Go ahead. Ain't nobody ever stepped the face like that. So he's okay. the only guy, but that's because ain't nobody stepped the face. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's um, I couldn't even imagine Scarface in a battle like that. But you know, just based well, I mean, on Mike his about skill some set, stuff that happened, Mike about the stuff that happened behind the scenes, he you know put a whole nother rapper on blast, and it didn't even the rapper didn't even come from a form like on record. He was just saying stuff around town, and that was enough to get him ignited. You know, I think look, based on the skill set and based on his ability to make people feel. I wouldn't doubt Scarface's, um, you know, abilities in that circumstance. But see, the thing is, Wayne has had the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Pusha T stuff, like, Pusha T's, you know, they were poking Wayne, poking Wayne. He's had the opportunity to show him his battle ability. I think he never wanted to get Push the energy early on because Mm -hmm. Push wasn't big enough like in the public's eyes but then it got to a point where it's like yo you can't keep letting fam just like spray you whenever he feel like it though either and with the ti thing that's just another one of those reasons mike why i say he is the most versatile mc to ever come out of this region he checks all the boxes it's like you want somebody lyrical no he's that you want somebody can put a hit record together no he can do that you want a street record he can do that it's like whatever you want an mc to do tip has it he's the most versatile mc ever out this region listen you know how i feel about down with the king it's my favorite ti project mixtape and so it's like when he's in that mode and he's in battle mode he's actually at his best in my personal opinion now 
He has think, versatility to do other things. But I think T.I. at his best, just like how Jay is at his best when he's conversational, when T.I. is in aggressive, back-to-the-wall mode, he's at his yes. best. No, Mike, I was about to say, when he's agitated, when you hear his agitation, or whatever the agitation may yeah. be, I'm going to tell you, like, the last project of his where I really felt, where I really heard that, was the Nick. When he did the Nick, I heard somebody that like felt like people was talking about him, yeah. like he wasn't getting the respect that he deserved, and he was agitated, and it reflected in it. Mike Project Steps, Peanut Butter Jelly. Yeah. Even yeah. songs like uh, I'm Talking mm-hmm. to You, like when he's mm-hmm. agitated or What's Up, What's Happening, like when he's I'm talking ag- to you. <laughs> I'm talking to you is his pinnacle moment to me of him being agitated and at his final, finest moment. Mike, that's another one of those. Who do you think he was talking like to? Verse, that third verse. Oh, that was that was rhyme of the year stuff. Who do you think he was talking to? Mike, I don't even. I never even checked, Mike. I just. Was I like mean, in the it seems record. like he named when we talk about Cash Money, he named everybody on Cash Money but Wayne. I mean, you know, it's like they were. That, that's why I was telling you, Mike. Their comeuppance as artists and major stars is around the same time. It's competitive, so I wouldn't be surprised. But that's kind. Of, that's kind of how it goes, Mike. That's kind of like when Nas is on Last Real Nigga Alive, and he's talking about mm-hmm. y'all didn't know who kicking the door was for. You know what I'm saying? But they kicking it, and like you know what I'm saying. But it's competitive too. You know what I'm saying? Like the game. The game's funny, Mike. It's funny like that. It's like you taking you, you having drinks with somebody who you taking shots at the next day. It's weird. <laughs> I mean, listen. I I don't know if people know this, and it was brought to my attention. Imaginary player is clearly about Mace. I mm-hmm. don't care what anybody says. Yeah. Oh my God. Always. I, I mean. I always felt that, but when you told me that, it like reminded me of like how I originally felt that. And then I was like, no, nah, I'm tripping. And then you told me, and I was like, ah, yeah. I was like, yeah, it is. Because who else is he talking about? Exactly. Who else is Jay talking about in 97? And I think that that verse from Niggas Want to Act, because they all were recording around the same place, same time, whatever. When he said, uh, hustle, what'd he say? Um, I roll hot. Shoot, let me find this. He said, "Roll hard like one of my bank stop nigga. Hustle is a hustle, so I don't knock a nigga. Don't really fuck with Dane, but I still cop jigger." And when Jay said, "It's funny how one verse could fuck up the game," that's the verse he's talking about. Okay, so even with that, so I thought imaginary players could have been just about all the young artists that were around the bad boy camp at the time. You feel what I'm saying? So that's like I thought that could have been a lock shot. I thought that could have been a may shot. I thought that could have been a rob shot. You feel what I'm saying? Now Mace you got was the guy ads. at the time. No, no Mace was the guy yeah. at the time. Selling records like, being you, but still but, you want to be me. But, Who was selling the records? Not, but are they not all around each other while Life After Death is getting made? Jay is there. Lox is there. Mace is there. Rob is there. Aren't they all there? So it's like, I thought that, that's one of those things where I mean, like, it's competitive. He's around these dudes. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, you know, y- y'all ain't there with me, like, with this yet. You know what I'm saying? Selling records so, being you, but still you want to be me. I guess for every buck you get, it's like a hundred for me. Still walking around like you got something on me, but I done did it. Niggas want to take my flow and run with it. That's cool. I was the first one with it. Rich Who is he talking about? flow, digital, still busting the gap and shit gets critical. Sit it down. I don't, I don't want, want y'all, y'all to get, get it confused. confused. I'll rip it down. Like, I ain't got nothing to lose. Get it now? <laughs> like, like, That's damn. my favorite shit, Mike. When he's like that, <laughs> Imaginary Play is one of the greatest diss records of all time. <laughs> it's, one, it's just one of my favorite rap records, Mike, because yeah. it's like it's one of those few rap records. It's like, man, I just want to hear him rap. No. Groupies, I leave them all fuck. Niggas, all stuck. Your single was 99 cents. Mine was four bucks. Four. Last year He's when niggas about. thought it was all luck. This year, I done it again. Jigga, what the fuck? Yeah, he's talking yeah. about Mace. Yeah, he's talking big, big <laughs> Mike, Mike, it's just one of those... Like, that's his moment for me where it's like if you were asking me what his style was and who he was on the mic and how I wanted to remember him, that's the guy that I want to remember on the mic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's him. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know where this shot came from from Niggas Want to Act. You know, he had Buster Rhymes on the hook. But, I mean, how would you take that, you know what I'm saying, that's that little cool. bar? from but, but also, too, that's one of those things. Jay is around these guys. Like, I mean, yeah. let's just call it what it is. Jay got more money than these guys when he's walking and pulling up and walking around. Like, he, Well, I think that's the thing, too, where, like you said, yeah. these, guys, these guys are around each other. They were around each other. Even the whole 
Locks and Jay thing happened because how they were treated in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it could have been one of those things where, you know, him and Mace were in the same space and he just wasn't feeling each other type thing. Right. Sometimes, Mike, it'd be yeah. like that. Like, some, sometimes you in the space with somebody and it's working and some days it's like, man, me and him, we just ain't not the day. And it stays with you and you take it with you and bars come out. Like, that's part, that's what I mean. It's like, it's weird because rap is still an emotional thing. So these things stay on dudes' minds and they're recording you know, so it's going to come out. So, yeah, you know? um, the the section that we did the other day about the game is really doing well on YouTube. So I guess a lot of people feel where game was coming from on this. There's not 50 MCs yeah. who are more battle tested than him, have the catalog as him and who are as skilled as him. I don't I don't understand what bridges he's burned, but this ain't the Hall of Fame, man, where the writers can sit here and decide the fate of a baseball player in the Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? Like, we're not going to sit here and, and write game off because certain people might not be feeling him on a personal level. Isn't he There's about to no drop way. Album? Huh? Isn't he about to drop an album? He's about to drop an album. And, you know, he's using this as momentum. But, again, he's been dropping quality work. He ain't got to drop nothing else. He's, he's top 30, 35-ish, period. Like, even if you want to just throw some names in there. I think when we were going through the list a couple days ago, I mean, we deduced him to around the 25 to 30 range. Some of those other people were kind of lingering or whatever, but he's still going. Yeah, 25 to 35 is a fair assessment, like like worst case scenario. Yeah. And it all depends. That's why I told you, Mike, this year we need to do like a real ranking where we kind of section everything off. Ooh. Like I would like to do a 10 section off category where we literally rank and give everybody a rating based on a scale of 10 different things. Because all these scales, real problem with these scales is that they don't expose weaknesses. They only okay. expose strengths. I want to ask you, people. and I want to ask the people in the chat, what would we be rating? Like, what would you say the um, categorical rating system would be? Like, catalog, um, lyrical well, skill, those can kind of be vague, at least the lyrical skill part. What, what say you? Oh, um, Mike, you know if somebody's lyrical if they're not. So if we're talking lyrical skills, some guys are getting a 10. Nas, okay. Big Pun, Rakim, those guys are getting a 10. If we're talking voice, Mike, some guys are getting a 10. Biggie, Method Man. What does lyrical skill mean? Let's break it down for everybody out there. I think lyrical skill is a point of articulation at a high level when you're taking a high usage of vocabulary and words and articulating a point in a manner that most in your genre can't. It's the articulation level of it that actually makes it lyrical. It's when you're saying something, but you're saying it in a manner that's making people, it's making you have an emotion. It's evoking a thought, it's evoking a feeling. So let's go to Follow the Leader by Rakim, mm -hmm. where he's talking about going out into the universe that did something to people because of how he explained it with his words. That's what it means. Like, so if we're just, so if we're giving an example for what it is to be a lyric, to give lyrics and a lyricist, follow the leader by Rakim is the blueprint. We're getting a lot of great stuff in the chat. Um, Mike 100 says substance. I like that over, um, you know, I guess lyrical content. I like substance. I like that. And he so also lyric says doesn't growth necessarily is... mean content, though. You get what I'm saying? That's sometimes true. Sometimes you can be lyrical and not say, anything but i'm about... saying that being a separate you yes. know a being no, yeah, a separate yeah, yeah, category yeah, yeah. okay um, yeah. mike 100 says also growth as an mc that's something that stood out to me i like that over longevity i saw versatility here too because the longevity game doesn't always mean your longevity is progressive so i do like the growth as an mc thing i'm writing all this down right now i'm listening yeah, yeah, and we'll go. Uh, we'll we'll go back in the chat and uh, oh, really so, start putting on. this together. So I, I got lyrics, voice, content, versatility, growth, catalog. Yeah, yeah. Impact. Impact. Impact's there. Um, that's that's seven right there. That's seven. Um, that's seven. We'll think of some more. Um, and. I'm seeing a lot in the oh, chat. Oh, d delivery. I mean, Mike, do you consider delivery and cadence to be in the same realm? Like, I think so. You got voice there too, right? I got voice down, but this, the voice is different than your delivery. Uh, Shots rang out says storytelling. How important is storytelling ability? I mean, Mike, 
if we're talking okay so here's because to thing. me when i feel like that's what a battle content, tested thing is too like when you're talking about content mike your ability to tell a story to me is tied to that because here's the thing about it if we single storytelling out some guys specifically are going to come out on top much higher like nas big ghost Scarface, Slick Rick, other guys are going to slide further down. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? They they're they're always being great off. storytellers as people think. So I consider storytelling in the sake of fairness to be wrapped into the content. Okay. So those guys might end up getting a 10 for content because they're great storytellers in addition to the content they provide. I think Whereas that's somebody, fair. Yeah. Because I was, I was going to ask you just on a random thought, who's the best female MC storyteller? Probably Rhapsody. I would think Rhapsody, just off the top of my head, I thought Rhapsody. Well, I mean, do got MC Light out there. <clears throat> we can always lean on Light, Mike. I mean, um, you know, Eve I is like, a pretty good storytelling MC, too, actually. Eve's a great storyteller. No, no, no. I like Eve, too. I would like to have seen more and heard more. That's my thing with Eve about everything. It's like, no, 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 right there. See more, hear more. You know, for me, I feel like Eve. When you talk about how T.I. is for the South, I think that she's probably the, one of the most, if not the most balanced female MC to ever do it, really. Like, you know, look, just balancing out that mainstream uh, notoriety, her ability to just rhyme on some rap shit, her ability to tell stories, um, you know, say her ability to be feminine, but not too mad. Like, it was a great balance with everything when it came to Eve. Bahamadia is another good one. True Honey Buns, dope storytelling. Yeah, Bahamadia was dope. I love um, Bahamadia. Mike, so what do you think about being battle-tested? Would that be a ranking for you? Because what I said, this is a competitive one-on-one -on -one type of sport, a la boxing or tennis, where you, you spar usually against one other person. But like you, know, you said, for somebody I, like Scarface, who's just never been in those riffs, I don't think that's fair. Okay. What um, about freestyle? Huh. KRS-One said you're not a real MC if you cannot freestyle. But see, again, what's the definition of freestyle? It means different things in different eras. Different people in different eras, yeah. right. Because in my so, era, it meant just going off the top, you know what I'm saying, right. being able to yeah. spit. In a previous era, it was just a rhyme about, you know, nothing. That could have been like written. Kane said. Yeah, yeah, like Kane said, right? And shit, now a freestyle is a whole damn song. Right. <laughs> so, we don't know. I so don't, we don't know what's going on. We can't on. really okay. define freestyle. It's, such, it's different in every era. Okay. Uh, Dark Matter says uh, no battle testing. Uh, so no battle testing doesn't matter. It's about okay. the song. Okay. Okay. But I will say this, though. For somebody who is battle tested, and even if we look at Common in those situations, like, battle -tested. you got to give him points. Battle tested. When you, look so at, when you look at most of the greats outside of Scarface, they've been in that situation. Yeah, nobody stepped the face. That's why I keep trying to say there's a reason for that, Mike. But what you want to know what one category, Mike, I've always wanted to bring up that I think really, really matters. It doesn't get stated enough level of competition for your peak era like as in who was around you when you were at your peak it's kind of like a, a per type of stat right yes yeah, so per type of stat how did yeah. you perform at your best against your competition and your peers in your peak years i mean kendrick lamar once again we're so ranked he's pretty so, low so here's on the thing that. about it so he's going to yeah. get high points for a lot of stuff but if we were to go to competition for his era mike he's probably going to get more like a four or a five or a three where a lot of his guys, like, I mean, like, here's the thing, Mike, like, Rakim, KRS-One, Cool G, like, all those guys are getting, like, tens. Nas, Pac, Big, J, they're getting tens. They had to deal with a lot, yeah. a lot. They had to deal with each other. And then they had to deal with guys like Redman, Lauren Hill, yeah. Wu-Tang Clan is there, Mike. Like, Ice Cube, Mike, that ain't normal climate. That's highly competitive. Who you're up against in the area, your peak matters. And shit is changing so fast. Uh, Soulmatic yeah. says uh, quality of opponent matters, and it does. Um, it does. Who do you think, and I want to piggyback off of that comment to ask you, who do you think in hip-hop has had the most quality opponents when it comes to battles? 
if we're talking about people taking shots at them, it's Nas. Because Nas is taking shots from Big, Pac, J, 50, and Cam. Nobody can say that. So if we're talking about who's taking the shots, it's Nas. But if we're talking about who's giving them the most, Mike, uh, you named, you bought up the game. That's that's a viable consideration. I can't think of one person off the top of my head right well, now. 50, 50 Cent's had a lot, but 50 has lost a lot. I mean, he hadn't really won one necessarily outside he won of the, the Ja Rule, Rule one. Yeah. You don't think he won the, uh, the Fat Joe? I mean... I mean, yeah, you can give him that. But, I mean, like, look what Kiss did to him on Checkmate. LL Cool J had cannabis. Even Nas with the MC Burial disc. You remember MC Burial? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, don't body yourself. Well, LL had um, Cool Mo D and cannabis. You want to know what? I will say LL just for the fact that LL dealt with peak guys, like guys who were at their peak in their era and dismantled them while they were at their peak. Like, whatever they were to people... Like, he dealt with them at their peak, and their peak wasn't the same after their battles. So Yeah, Kumo D was a legend. You know what no, I'm saying? Like, yeah, he was he the was OG. Yeah. He was the guy. He was the guy till L did that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he was the pioneer for, you know, all the guys that were thriving at that time. Yeah, yeah. Some would tell you that, um, that Kumo D won that one, but, you know, that brings about another conversation, and we'll move on, but... What actually determines who wins a battle? Because I personally believe that if that cannabis and LL thing happened in the internet era, it may have been a different outcome. I'm not saying who won what, whatever, but what actually determines who won a battle? The person that keeps going? Mike, quality of record matters here. Mm -hmm. Quality of record and Mike also, Mike performance. That's the thing about the battle, your Mike performance. So Mike, Ice Cube's most memorable Mike performance is probably No Vaseline. And it's because of how he approached it. You get what That's I'm saying? It's a great record, too. It's both of those things. That's why it's great. Like, he's great. The record's great. And what you do in battle is it's supposed to bring out the best in what you have to offer. It's supposed it's kind of tribal in a sense, Mike. It's supposed to bring out that part of you and like kind of show who you are and what you're made of. That's why I love Mama said knock you out so much. It's like, oh, look at him getting off the canvas. It's like Shotgun on some gangs in New York her. shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That, that that matters. The quality of the record matters. The quality of the MC in terms of what they're doing on the record matters. That's why I tell you the strongest point about Ether is the hook because that part where he's doing two hooks at once is more quality than all of the three verses. It's two hooks at once. Well, see, now the problem with he's taking with, his shit, you know, while he's doing Ether, the Ether and the Takeover can be debated, right? I personally listen to the Takeover more. The reason why Nas won that is because Super Ugly is terrible. No, Mike, nobody. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's go to lyricist. This is what I'm talking about, the verbiage when you're using certain words. So he's in a battle with a guy who is having the greatest peak of all time. And his reply is, I fuck with your soul of ether, Mike. No, that's no, you're right. About, he coming different when he's thinking about it. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's that highest level of thinking about it. It's like, no, I'm, I'm about to give him that. No, Let I'm me rephrase what I'm saying. Let me rephrase what I'm saying. What and Nas ether, did on Ether, burn slow. No, what Nas did on Ether trumped what Jay did on Takeover because Takeover is not a totally dedicated record to Nas specifically, right? It's That's not. Jay's it's fault. not three or four verses. That's coming. Jay's fault. No, no, you're right. That's Jay's fault. But his Jay's opportunity fault. to respond to Ether was the opportunity to go full in, and you dropped the ball. You want to know why? It was Mike? a good setup. It was okay, a setup so, without a return serve. What did you so think I, was going to happen? You thought you were going to spit this one verse and Nas wasn't going to come back? Like, Mike, that's why the hook is so important because it's like if you go back and listen to Super Ugly, it's like, well, damn, he did fuck with him because, damn, look at how terrible that was. It's like, think about it, Mike. That was the first 
undope record that he had released in a very long time where people were like, what are you and doing? he was on a roll, so too. Back to that book and it's like, I ah, fuck with your soul of ether. Will, teach you the king you know you not. Got son across the belly. Lose. I proved you lost already. And then that happened. It was like prophecy. And it was lyrical. It's better than all of the verses. It's better all the verses between both of the songs. You know, between both of the songs. I think we've talked about this before, too. But I feel like after Stillmatic and after Ether, Nas pushed Jay to be a better MC again. Because Jay was on some real lazy rap shit, and as great as the blueprint is, it's kind of carried by production, feel, and approach. He's not super lyrical on there like that. He has a few lines here and there where it's like, you know, what you eat don't make me shit type of things. But he's also on there on some gnarly dude, I puff Bob Marley dude. And all that said, some lazy lyricism. But like you said, when Nas came with Ether, it was just straight up lyricism. And Jay's response to that was, you know, super ugly, which was weak. But when he came with the Blueprint 2, you could tell it was a conscious effort. Like, I'm going to wrap my ass off. You need to rap again. Yeah. yeah. He's not I, I'm not like going to be able to do the lazy, slow down stuff that I did on Volume 2, Volume 3. And people will eat it up. This guy's rapping crazy right now. You want to know what he did on the blueprint, though, Mike? Like, he made up for the lack of what, like, the lyrics that are on Volume 1 and on Reasonable Doubt aren't on the blueprint except for a couple of moments. Mm -hmm. But he had mastered the flow that he was trying to develop by then. And that's where he really came off on that album. He, like, Mike, he was, like, doing, like, stop and go type of movements on the mic that very few MCs, if any, before I've heard seen do consistently on record. Like, that conversational flow mm -hmm. got to a zenith to the point that he's damn near talking on record and it sounds great. You don't know. Shout out to Leroy Green in the building. He said, uh, Mike, Blueprint 2. I was going to mention Blueprint 2, and I think that if Blueprint 2 was the, the song I'm talking about, not the album. That was the actual response to Ether. This thing could have stretched out a little bit more. I mean, that verse that he gave Nas on the Blueprint too, it was dope. And yeah. honestly, one of my favorite lines in the whole battle is that whole, you know, and your little brother Jungle is a garden to me. Your little homie Jungle is like a garden to me. It's, You're not as hard as me. Not as hard as we. It was uh, like, can't y'all see that he's fake? The rap verse and the TD Jakes prophesizing on your CDs and tapes. Yeah. He was he making a, a conscious effort. Makes, yet he won't give you a crumb off the piece that he makes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Mike, yeah. it was epic. Mike, it's not Ether and it was too little too late. No, it was too little too late. I mean, because again, <laughs> once Mike, again, and, uh, and Super Ugly about, already happened. Well, let's not forget. It's like, not to just have Ether. There's a Stillmatic freestyle over the paid full beat, too. So he sung them twice, not once. He sung them twice, not once. And then there's the last real nigga live out there. The gift and the curse, fuck that shit. The first should be last. I'm a man's man, a rapper's rapper. G O D. So we ended up beating nothing after. I was Scarface shit. Yeah. yeah. Mike, he took L's all across the board. I don't know why people acting like it didn't happen. But that's neither here nor there. No, no, no. But again, that's all about. Hold on one second. Uh, I want to make sure that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Because I know we're going to get into some articles in a second. We went really off. Off page or off of no, course. No, we were talking about just like the battle side of things. Well, battles matter. No, battles is part of hip hop. So it's like anytime we get off into that conversation, it's relative and relevant because it's part of the core core part of MC. It and is. again, when we talk about the people who did this the best, and you know, uh, you know, kind of going back to our previous episode, if you didn't catch it, it's on our YouTube channel or whatnot. But all these lists that people had, you got to start. You got to factor in all those things. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if somebody wanted to, for whatever reason, hold that against the MC, that they're not as battle tested as an Ice Cube is, or a Common is, or a TI is, or a Jay Z, or a Nas is, they got that right. But the fact that a guy who checks all the boxes in the game is getting left out of the discussions altogether, like, y'all acting like this man got a ghostwriter or something. So that let's go happening. to somebody, and this is what I'm, so let's go to competition too. This is what I mean about somebody like Red Man. So look at when Red Man's coming out. And then right after he comes out, Wu-Tang comes out. Yeah. Big comes out. Nas comes out. Jay comes out. He still makes himself viable in that highly competitive yeah. climate of guys that came after him. All these guys came after Red Man. He didn't, he got his burn, 
right in the middle of all of these guys' runs right there with them. That's part of why he's all-time great to me. That's why usually when I'm doing a top 10 list, he's usually not in my top 10, but he's usually 11 or 12 because I'm very, very clear the level of competition he was dealing with and how he performed. Well, the thing about Red Man that people hold against him is his lack of lyrical content, per se, you know, when it comes to what his peers were talking about. If we talk about substance and things like that, right? Subject matter. I no no. I, I, di- I disagree. With, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Not, but what I will say about we're not, Red, we're not having a lyrical conversation. No, no, Red, I agree with you. Utterly ridiculous. I agree with you. It's just like I. I mean, I want to say what people say, just like we did with Pusha T last week, right? But see, the thing so, is with Red Man, Red Man created a whole different lane of rap style, like you said. I originated all that wild shit, that row, row shit. That's him. Like, any of that bully foot rap shit, like, I'm a Sean Price fan. I'm a Buster fan. That OBD. bully foot rap shit, like, yeah. That's Red Man. That all comes from the tree of Red Man, and I love it. Eminem. Even Method Man. Eminem, Ludacris. Yeah. 